I'm joined by Highly Suspect. Their new album, The Midnight Demon Club, is out September 9th. Uh, welcome, guys. How are you guys doing today? Oh, here you go. I, I wanted to know a little bit about this um, this new album because everything about it is pretty striking to me, including like the art, the songs that you've put out so far. Uh, but I, I wanted to know for uh, the songwriting process on this album, well, what did that look like for all five of you together? Uh, so we weren't together. Oh, was, you weren't it together. It's very different than, uh, than it typically is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we'll try to get into, or we will get into a room and do all this together. And, you know, we kind of did a, a brunt of this during, you know, COVID times, pandemic times. Oh, yeah. COVID times. COVID times. So we all live in different parts of the country, and, um, yeah, we, we started file sharing and whatnot. Yeah. And it, was, it was fantastic, actually, because it gave us a different way to record. When you're in a room together, there is sometimes, you know, there's a vibe. Yeah. And sometimes that vibe is awesome, and sometimes that vibe sucks. <laughs> This gave us a chance to kind of sit back and listen to this thing and be like, oh, here's what I can add here. So, Ooh. Cool. That, that's pretty interesting. You mentioned that you guys live in all different places, which I, I caught wind of uh, before we started the show today. Um, not to like dox you all, I'm not going to ask you where you live. Uh, but, <laughs> 33, um, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Social security numbers, please yeah. listen. Uh, but how do, you, how do you get together to practice to do that stuff? Do you kind of have these... Uh, meetups scheduled throughout the year to really like hammer out these new songs or for the past few years has it been kind of mostly just remote and then when you get together you'll get together yeah kind of like in order for us to practice we have to you know buy flights and hotels and yeah. get together uh, so it's not like it used to be but maybe one day we'll have like a, a cool band spot again you know mm -hmm. um, yeah I mean like when we're when we're on the on the road, we're together all the time, anyways. Right. So it kind of works out, anyways. We all get our space, and yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. When you um when you're on the road, because I, I mentioned before that you guys were on the road for a, like a super long time, uh, early in your career. Uh, how did you write music at that point in your career? Did you write it on the road, or did you always kind of wait for there to be a stopping point where you just kind of hang out for a little bit? I feel like that was like Both. a big learning thing for us mm -hmm. because we didn't write really much at all we just were like focused on the tour mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then when we had to make an album we were starting from scratch we didn't have anything mm -hmm. so this time i think we've we've decided to just we don't write on tour we fucking party on tour <laughs> <laughs> we fucking get it in on tour and there's just no work going on except for the work that involves the life that you're doing with the show uh -huh. um do you have any favorite bars that you've been to on tour what's that one in houston <laughs> the, dirt, the dirt bar <laughs> Yeah, dirt bar. Dirt bar. Dirt bar. Oh dirt man! Bar? Wow, never been to Houston. So when I do, I'll I'll be sure to check it out. <laughs> um, now for this album cycle, uh, you said that you wrote all these things in different places and contributed that way. Uh, was that any different in terms of people contributing, or is it usually one person that writes and everybody kind of piles things on, or were the ideas kind of coming from everybody? So there's no instance? real formula. I wish there was. Uh -huh. If there was a formula, we would have so many more albums and songs mm -hmm. but um you know every song is different everything is different but these guys got together uh mm -hmm. you know ryan and rich were living together in nashville mm -hmm. and um did a brunt of like the musicality mm -hmm. for it without me which is the first time thing because usually like i'm there and i'm like jamming my fucking riffs down everyone's throats <laughs> and this time they were like yeah let's fucking do some shit you know, without him, and I was totally cool. Mm. It wasn't like a conscious decision, like we don't want Johnny here, but it was just kind of like I needed some time to just kind of like get my head where sure. I wanted yeah. my head to be. Um, and these guys wrote a lot of shit, mm -hmm. and then I kind of came in uh, in Los Angeles and did a lot of like the melody and lyric stuff, which mm -hmm. was nice oh, yeah. for me because for once I didn't like you know we we've got more people in the band now. We've got Mark Schwartz here and Matt, and we worked with our producer uh, uh, Drew Falk. And blood. Yeah, and he's amazing. He's out in Los Angeles. And it was nice because it was just like I felt like um, I could really focus on what it is I wanted to say mm -hmm. with the words on mm -hmm. this one. And, and so it's mm -hmm. just a totally different process than we've ever done. Wow. But I think every album should be that way. Yeah, it, it's nice to hear a different approach, definitely. And uh, w when you guys uh, do work together, not to like make, make you all get sappy, but what's your favorite part about working with specifically each other uh, on making music? I mean, there's like a lot of camaraderie here. I mean, we're... <laughs> There's a lot of camaraderie here, you know. We're we're sort of brothers. You know, we we we've been together for a long time. So it's you know when we're separated from each other, it's like oh, what's up, dude? Like oh, cool. Like, right. It's nice to be together. Yeah. It's cool after especially COVID. You know, mm -hmm. so long. That's a good aspect. Oh yeah. 
I, I think that this this one in particular, when we were doing the majority of the the instrumentals mm-hmm. parts, um, we just we just barbecued and um, kind of lived and breathed the project. You know, cool. woke up and like I'd I'd wake up and go down to the basement and Mark would be editing stuff, you know, with <laughs> headphones on so he didn't wake anybody up and like we put it, blow up mattresses out on the floor and just kind of, you know, had a big slumber party. Oh, nice. And it was great because like the the world was shut down. Mm-hmm. So there was nothing to do anyways. There was no FOMO. There was no like, oh, I'm, I'm out doing this cool thing or whatever. Like you should come too. None of that. So wow. these guys built Legos together. That's what they did without me. <laughs> yeah. And then we so many Legos. And, and then you came in and stepped on all of no them. Joke. Is that <laughs> <laughs> no joke. And then and then the label like hit us up and they're like, why did you spend so much fucking money? Because we got to like turn the receipts. And we're like, yeah, oh. this is part of the recording process because it's a fucking team building exercise. <laughs> it's true, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like some artists, right? They're gonna spend some of that budget on on drugs and this, that, and the other. And uh, our our fucking thing was Legos, and they were like. I don't know if we want to pay these Lego receipts. We're like, we have to pay these Lego receipts. This is an expense. This is a write-off. So, it's either Legos or drugs. Yeah. <laughs> you better be happy you get Lego. Some combination of the two, but we, were, we called it Lego Gate. Why can't I chat? I'm trying to chat here on stream. What's up, guys? I'm trying to chat with you guys, but uh, oh, I see you, Lacey, and everybody. What's your username? So everybody have, knows who you are. So let me plug myself. Yeah, it's give it. Terrible Johnny M C I D. I think. <laughs> well, we're gonna see what happens when you get in there. <laughs> I'm trying to chat. I gotta be like a follower for ten minutes. So. I uh, did you? Oh, okay, okay. Whoa, cool. the gatekeeper. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. We uh. Are you yeah, Pesto God? No, Who's no. Pesto, Pesto God's God? one of our one of our friends. Pesto God, yeah. you have an insane name because I just discovered how much I love Pesto this week. This week. This what? week. What did you do? Where have you been? For the- <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing? <laughs> yeah. Plant- did you Did you make it yourself? Give me the, Give me the background. Did you Was it basil pesto? Was it like it was Spanish like a pesto? vegan pesto that my girlfriend put on some pasta, and mm. I was just like, <laughs> "It's the best thing I've ever had." <laughs> <laughs> I also discovered pesto late in life. I think I was maybe like. Right, when, 24. When you're a kid, like, what are you fucking, like, 17 years like, <laughs> younger? What are you going to be like, oh, they go and get some pesto? Like, no. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. I want Yeah, you want all that marinade. You want red sauce. Marina- red sauce. sauce. You want cheese. You want that butter sauce, actually, is what I what I used to get when I was, like, seven. They'd be like, give me the butter sauce, and they'd be in the kitchen in, in the Italian restaurant, like, these fucking kids. <laughs> Come all the way from Italy just to make butter sauce with this man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you eat it with a spoon and fork, though? No, never. I've never used a spoon to eat pasta, ever, yeah. ever. Do you use a spoon to eat pasta? I got in a friend who's Italian, and, he's, you know, that's what he does. Huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because yeah, you, like, do it in the spoon yeah. and whatnot? Yeah. Do any of you do that? No. 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 Okay. I use my hands. Sometimes I don't even use a <laughs> <laughs> Just get in there. You got to put, put the wets on, on the noodles, <laughs> and you eat it with your hands. Yeah, oh, that's good. That's, yeah. that's a good method. I'll give that mm-hmm. a try. I'm sure my girlfriend would really appreciate that on our date. Um, next week. It's a great first date, too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sure it goes over very well. Mm-hmm. Um, how's that honey stick, by the way? <laughs> you probably already know. It came from your cafe. Yeah, yeah, it's over my, my cafe. Your cafe yeah. is John's Cafe. Yeah, John's Espresso right Dealership, yes. What's up, Nicole? What's up, Hollins? What's up? <laughs> some, some of my followers are here. Some of my people are here. I'll play oh, yeah. for you guys later, I promise. Oh, yeah, you, uh, you game on Twitch? That's my thing. Hell yeah. That's, That's like what got me through the pandemic. It's so cool mm-hmm. that you guys... When did your Twitch show start? It's been about a year and a half okay. uh, at this time. Yeah. So also, you guys decided during that time, like, what else can we do right. during this time? How else do you, like, reach people at the yeah. time? Mm-hmm. And here we are in this digital age, mm-hmm. and Twitch is just such a great one. And yeah. honestly, like, you know, when you're not touring, you know, um, mm-hmm. it's a good way to make a little... Yeah, a little, a little something yeah, on the side, a right? Subsidiary income. Have you thought about uh, taking the band on Twitch ever? Has that ever happened? So we didn't want to do any digital performances. Mm-hmm. We were just kind of like against that for a while. We're, we're going to. I think we want to do it with you guys eventually. Yeah, I mean, that'd be great. Um, Love to have you songs, back. But if you'll have us. But um, yeah, we didn't want to do it when everybody else was doing it. It just like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just needed a, a minute. I honestly yeah. just needed a minute. We, yeah. Like you had said before we got on, like we've been, you, you're like, oh, highly suspect. That's the band that always tours. And we had just been touring and touring and touring and touring. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, the pandemic was a good thing. But if there's anything that I took from it, it was the a moment to breathe. Mm-hmm. You know, because we're kind of like becoming OGs at this point, even though we're not yeah. some like huge famous band. Like, we've been around the block for a minute. We've been doing this thing. So yeah. it was nice to take a little bit of time. 
and then make some Twitch friends and, and play video mm-hmm. games and like just not be everywhere. Yeah, have a community a little yeah. bit while, while you're kind of inside. Yep. Um, do you remember? You guys remember the first time you met up after you were sending these files to each other for the new music? And did, did you meet up very shortly after uh, pandemic things kind of cooled down, or were you still just separate for a long time? I didn't think I saw Johnny for like a year. Wow. I mean, talked on the phone or whatever. Sure, yeah. That's about it, yeah. Wow. But nothing changed, though. That was the, that was the mm-hmm. cool part. It was like, oh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. And uh, I, I noticed uh, with this new album, or like the new singles that I've been able to get my hands on for this new album, um, there, there's been a, a bit of a change in style, I guess. Um, over the year of kind of writing and putting things together and sending things back and forth, um, did did it ever come across that you guys wanted to change it up a little bit or was that ever a thought or does it kind of just happen naturally? So let's address this. This is yeah. a great time to address this because I think this is going to come up a lot. And I think that um, we are at core, mm-hmm. all of us are musicians. Yeah. And some there are some acts that are like performers at core. There are some acts that are uh, fashion icons at core. At core, we are like musicians and mm-hmm. we were in a cover band we played all sorts of different things we all listen to different things we all like different things mm-hmm. I enjoy we, we, I'm speaking for everybody I can do this yeah. like festivals and, and, and uh, being able to see different like if I'm at the gym I'm listening to A and if I'm uh, mm-hmm. making pesto pasta I'm listening to B <laughs> do you know what I mean? in the past so week. I think that like our first couple of albums are a little bit more similar a lot more similar than some of the things that we've come out with since and we had success with that. Yeah. Those aren't actually our first albums. Before that, we were a reggae band. We have a, an album mm-hmm. that's got like a little bit of that influence, but that album was even post the reggae band thing. Mm-hmm. So we've gone through all these different changes. And, you know, a lot of people um, have noticed and been like, are you changing style? It's not a conscious decision. Mm-hmm. And we're not sitting there and saying like, hey, let's intentionally do this type of music necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's more like, oh, that sounds cool. Let's you know jam on that thing, and then this the song will grow. And it, like our our whole ethos is like if if it sounds cool, when this new album comes out, it's again gonna have all sorts of you know we've got a few songs out. Mm-hmm. No one has any idea what the other eight songs yeah. sound like. Yeah, and I guarantee you they don't sound like the ones that just came out. It's hard to tell because uh, the ones that are out sound completely different from each mm-hmm. other as it is. Uh, I think my favorite because I'm I'm a huge metal fan is probably Pink Lullaby. Right on. But I mean. It's, it's nice that there's a little something for everybody, though, because I feel like with the, what, four singles you right. got out right now? So we're intentionally dropping two at a time so mm-hmm. that you can see, like, oh, here's the song that, you know, like, let's be honest, it's nice to be on the radio. Here's yeah. what the format enjoys. So we don't write the song thinking, mm-hmm. like, let's get one for the radio. But it's like when you look back at the collection, you're like, oh, this one is going to probably do best at the radio. Mm-hmm. So this is what we'll present there. And mm-hmm. this is what's going to help broaden the audience and show people right. that we exist. But then again, there's your deep cut, your B-side, which, you know, is... Matt Kofos going on the guitar and this boy drumming his ass off and like that is a completely different element and we drop it at the same time to let people know Mm -hmm. hey yeah there's going to be these songs that maybe are softer and there's going to be songs that are harder and you know there's going to be things for everybody Mm -hmm. in this album or not or maybe there's nothing for it and that's Mm -hmm. fine too whatever just like if it sounds good to us and we have a very versatile palette um, of things that sound good to us, then we're going to work on it. So. I feel like unintentionally, it sounds like you guys set up a, like a funnel a little bit. Because usually, I don't know, when you get into a genre of music, right, you get into the kind of service level stuff. And then eventually, like if you get into metal music, right, you get into Metallica, you get into Black Sabbath. But then you go deeper and deeper and deeper, and then you find yourself in the middle of like Prague land or something like that. But... With you guys, I found it pretty interesting, especially on this new album, that you can take kind of things that are, as you said, kind of more like radio-ish mm. singles, but then kind of funnel it down and then get a bunch of very interesting little different tracks on there, too. Yeah, we, we I think we made, uh, not like to completion, but we made 60 something like demos? 60. <laughs> so oh, we, my God. We took two whiteboards. Well, it started with one, mm-hmm. and, then, and then Mark mm-hmm. taped them off and had all these different... Um, <clears throat> pieces in there and, and we were like all right let's just fill this board mm-hmm. and then we filled it and we had a bunch of leftovers so we made another board for the leftovers and then we we're like fuck it let's let's just fill this board wow. and it ended up being like 60 something tracks and there's stuff in there that like you know came this close to getting finished and it sounded you know stuff that would sound like uh zero seven or mm. um you know 
be like super like hard rock. You know what I mean? It's everything across the board and the best 12 float mm-hmm. to the top. So the album just kind of like happened naturally because we just made stuff that we like mm-hmm. versus like, let's listen to our old albums and make a duplicate of like whatever did best statistically mm-hmm. so that we can make money. We were just mm-hmm. like just making music in a studio. Cool. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What a concept. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. In a studio? Yeah. yeah. Wild. Um, no. I want to hear a bit more about that. Um, Mark, it seems like everybody talks about you when they talk about uh, studio stuff specifically. That's uh, me. What is your role with, the, do you, are you producing these songs or what is your role in that capacity? Uh, well, we all produced the new record. Mm-hmm. We did it with Drew and, you know, so we all had our, our sticky fingers and a little bit of everything, mm-hmm. but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I handled the majority of, like the engineering mm-hmm. for all the instrumentals and stuff, yeah. you know, tracking the drums and chopping it all up and mm-hmm. piecing it together and getting all the files to Drew, <laughs> get all stuff back from Drew and just yep. all that kind of world of stuff. So, yeah, kind of just fell into that. I mean, you know, I started playing keyboards with these guys in like 2019 or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then like we got kicked off the road. They were just like, hey, you want to you want to write with us? I was like, sure. And then. You know, next thing I know, I was driving my studio out to their house and setting it up in the basement, just, just off to the races like we that. actually stole Mark from a studio. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. You were working yeah. at a studio. Yeah. About studio G. Oh. yeah, so I mean, I met these guys because they made three records at Studio G out in cool. Greenpoint in Brooklyn. Cool. Um, and yeah, when they made, was it The Boy Who Died Wolf? Mm-hmm. I was an intern. So I was no way. running wow. out and getting sandwiches for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And you know, like setting wow. up amps and doing stuff. But you know, it was cool. You know, I saw them record like Serotonia and Wolf, wow. and like I saw Johnny when he was recording Chicago. He probably doesn't know that, but you know, wow. I didn't know that. See that kid's endless <laughs> opportunity at Highly Suspect LLC. <laughs> Come on in. You never know. The sky's the limit. There's no you ceiling. Could you, you could. You, <laughs> could <laughs> and you could be the sixth band member. <laughs> You could be the sandwich if you wanted to be. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, oh, that's so, great. I yeah, love so that they, story. Wow. They made a few records and then, you know, they were cool. just like, hey, we need a keyboard player. And then, wow. you know, Johnny cornered me in the corner of the bar and he was like, you got any? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you got kids? You got, you got you any got felonies kids? or anything? You got a like, wife at home? <laughs> yeah, literally. And I'm like, yeah, kind of, sort of, but, you know. Kids and felonies. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> no, I'm good. Let's, let's go around the world. Let's do whatever you want to do. Oh, wow. So, the answer That's to both weird. of those questions was no. What else do you need? <laughs> uh, no, you know, we were doing uh, MCID, the album, and there's a lot of uh, Ableton was making a lot of different things on Ableton. I don't know how to use Ableton. I'm a guitar mm-hmm. guy, you know, I'm like 36 years old. And, like, Mark was constantly, every time I had a question, our producer was like, oh, why don't you ask Mark? Mark knows Ableton very well. Mm-hmm. And so I actually saved Mark on my phone as Ableton Mark. And then eventually, when we finished it, we're like, shit, we got to play this shit live. I don't know how yeah. to do this. You know, I got to get back on the guitar. I'm like, well, let's, um, let's see if Mark wants to join the band. And, and what a fantastic addition. Because I think mm-hmm. that, ha- you know, as a three-piece, it was really awesome. It was really fun. It was really simple. It was uh, very wham-bam. But now we've got the capability to, to show up at a festival and play with the likes of Bring Me the Horizon and still bring... Yeah as much sound as these other bands or Meg the Stallion, you know, as much right. sound as is coming from these, whereas before it was a little bit thinner. So now we've mm-hmm. got sub bass and we've got uh, synthesizers yep. and we've got two guitars and it's like, we're big sounding machine. Right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I was going to say the sound, uh, I don't know. I feel like you guys have always been similar to this, but it's kind of like a stadium rock where it's like, it's just loud. It's just a lot of like power behind it. And that's really cool. I, I also been uh, looking in chat and uh, everybody's been wanting uh, Rich to talk a little bit. Uh, so, okay. Rich, um, no. can you take all the microphones? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll use them both. <laughs> can you tell me uh, I, what you ate for breakfast this morning, Rich? Oh, uh, I had a corn muffin for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, can you tell me how you felt uh, playing on this new album? Uh, how was the recording process? How did I feel yes. playing on it? Um, it was the, the the easiest, most comfortable uh, record, <laughs> record making process of my life because really? it was in my house. Yeah, so oh, it was just yeah. always uh, it was like always at my fingertips. You know, oh, up, I mean, even to the point where like a, I sometimes was tired of it. You know what I mean? It was like I gotta get out of the house and get away from this record. You know what I mean? It's like driving me crazy. Like you know, taking walks around the block. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. like walks in the woods or whatever. Uh-huh. You know, just to get out of the house for the afternoon because it was mm-hmm. just like I was listening to the same songs over and over, which mm-hmm. is what you do when you're making music. You know, right. um, but yeah, it was a blast. Uh, 
and there'd be like a few weeks in between um, the the big writing sessions uh, mm-hmm. where I would have like a you know a minute to work on guitars or like you know uh, maybe travel somewhere or whatever. But for the most mm-hmm. part, everyone was just like at my house, either on the couch or on a blow up mattress, <laughs> and we were in the basement. <laughs> Just, yeah, just playing the same song over and over again for hours. Like, oh, what about this? What about that? What if I did this? You know, like changing stuff. I remember actually a question you asked earlier I wanted to answer. You yeah, said, like, please. what was your, what's your favorite part about the whole, like, file sharing thing? Yeah. And um, I feel like my favorite part of that, about that process is when, you know, you, you work hard on something and, 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 you know, you get excited about it and you show it to your friends and like, oh, okay, this is cool. And, like, the next day or, like, the next week or whatever, they come back at you with something else. Like, hey, how about this? And they've changed it, and it's, like, better. And you're like, yeah. oh, this is great. What a good idea. You know, and then yeah. somebody else gets it, and they make it better. It's, mm-hmm. like, exciting to watch something grow. Because that doesn't always happen. You know, sometimes you work on something, you think it's cool, and everyone's like, what? <laughs> what, the, what is this? You know? You know, so... Um, that, but that's the exciting part is when it, when something you, you know catches on. Yeah, I yeah. bet like there was a lot of chance for things to like catch on and also go badly because I feel like when you have like a, as you said like a sixty song roster of like instrumentals, I'm sure there's like some places that were expanded upon and some places that were like okay, let's maybe pump the brakes on this and consider it for later. Yeah, well, it's it, it's tough because like people you know when you work really hard on something, you become attached and they can you know. You don't want to offend your friend if, mm. if they worked on something and you don't know what to do with it. So a lot yeah. of times people would just be like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, great, great job. <laughs> and then <laughs> nothing would happen. And no like, follow up. And there's yeah. your answer, uh-huh. like, you know, how they really feel about yeah. it. <laughs> 60 different times, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, um, I definitely, we, we hinted about, uh, Johnny talked about, um, the, I guess, the genre question uh, before, but I, I kind of wanted to get a little bit of um, uh, insight into each of you individually and what kind of music that you are personally listening to right now um, and maybe what kind of music you gravitate towards the most. Um, I don't know, Mark, you want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, but listen to a lot of Turnstile. Yeah. Mm, they, cool. They are the shit. They are a great band. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I'm pretty all over the map. I mean, I listen to a lot of, like, weirdo, down-tempo, electronic music, cool. like Bonobo, Massive Attack, cool. like that whole world of stuff. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'm, I'm all over the map. Awesome. Totally. Yeah. Uh, probably, like, obviously Gojira. All these guys make fun of me for only yeah. listening to <laughs> Gojira. <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with that. He's a one-band man. You Gojira, right? I'm like, That's yeah. That's how people <laughs> Yeah. I listen to a lot of like Copeland, Front Bottoms, Man. like, you know, Me Without You, like old stuff, Man. you know, from like the 2000s that were just like That's scene cool. shit, you know? You had, uh, you had Gojira on MCID, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, yeah. He did a bunch that of stuff That must have been insane there. for you, or was that like when like, you first learned about yeah, them? Yeah, no, I'm like a massive fan of them, even though they're like friends of us, and I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I was like sitting at a bar right by our house, and Joe was sitting right next to me, and I was just like, oh, shit, I gotta go. <laughs> I don't want him to know that I like him. <laughs> I was like, man, you were just on my album, but I don't want to say anything to you. <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing. No, but they're super cool. And yeah, like Queens, you know, a lot of, it's all over the place. But anything that gets me going heavy, something I can ride my bike to, you know, something something awesome, gritty. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Rich, what about you? Uh, lately, I've been listening to the new Banks album and the new Post Malone record and... Uh, Johnny got me into Harry Styles. <laughs> oh. Um, what else is new? I don't know if you guys might be surprised by all that. I don't know. But no, it's great. It's great to know. I don't listen to a lot of rock. I do. Lo- I love Queens of Stone Age. Mm, cool. Um, and I mean. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty good list. I'm trying to add to it, but like I don't want to. Yeah, I listen to Bon Iver all oh, the time. Bon Iver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> so as uh, as we've moved through three of us now, um, yes. I mean, I listen to all the stuff that they just listed. So mm-hmm. um, thanks for all the all that, guys. <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, but I mean, I, I, I found over, um, I found over the quarantine, uh, I found myself listening to a ton of, uh, trip hop, um, just real, like, um, you know, the lo-fi hip hop, Mm -hmm. that, that stuff. Oh, nice. Just, I would, I'd be 
you know, stressed about the world exploding and I would just put that on and everything mm. would be okay. Mm. Yeah. I mean, just like, <laughs> you don't even have to pay attention to it. It's just like, oh, this like calming vibration coming out the speaker and, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> the Doom soundtrack is insane. Yo. It's just like what? <laughs> Wait, are you talking about Doom with the Rock? That that movie, or is there another no, like Doom the, movie? Yeah, like the, video game. the video game. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the Dune soundtrack with the Rock, but <laughs> that's, that's different. I mean, for some people, that does it. Some people listen to death metal and go to sleep. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, generally. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everyone's wired differently. I, I would, I would like my heart would start racing if I was listening to that, which I also love that. But that's like what I would listen to if I was going to the gym or something. You know, um, uh, we have um, we have a couple really great rock bands um, that are coming on tour with us in September. Um, Tiger Cub, um, and, uh, Dead Poet Society. Mm. There's a lot of great rock bands that are coming up right now. Um, I didn't, I didn't listen to rock music for a while and I feel like, um, I feel like guitar is kind of making a cool comeback mm. right now. Yeah. A lot of like nineties inspired definitely rock music, which is great. And I feel like when all the pop stars are like going to guitar music now, it's, yeah. it's huge. I mean, yeah. Billy for rock music. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Didn't Billy put out an album called guitar songs or something? Yeah. Yeah, she did. Yeah. It was uh, with acoustic. Uh, Demi Lovato came out with an album mm -hmm. today. That's all pop punk somehow. Yeah. Of course. Um, so yeah, everybody's doing it. I feel yeah. like, yeah. which is great for us because we, we always make, you know, sort of just a splattering of different types of music. And now everyone else is kind of doing that. Mm. And it kind of like, it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. But yeah, I think, I think that's because we all listen to just a variety of music. Mm -hmm. You know, if you listen to the same thing, you're just going to turn out the same the thing, same thing right. just like Matt listening to Koshira <laughs> all the time. <laughs> you finally got your wish. It was, it yeah, was worth we'll it. Do it again. Yeah, <laughs> it's over. Just now. kidding, Joe. <laughs> um, and uh, Johnny, what about you? What have you been nobody, listening to? Nobody really? cares. Oh man, nobody cares what I listen to. Oh. I listen to weird shit. So like uh, weird shit. I like I like upset fan. Every time you know what I've had this question asked. <laughs> And I'll talk about what I listen to, and people are like, it's kind of like, you know, it just like destroys the fantasy of, like, Johnny the Rock guy, so, uh, <laughs> like, what, do you really want to know that I listen to, like, Rosalia and shit? And, like, I do. Lolo Zawai, female-fronted electro-pop. Oh, yeah. Like, that's, like, the shit that I'm into, honestly. Pretty cool, man. Yeah. You just ruined it for me. <laughs> I've never listened to this like, band again. <laughs> I'm the suspect's dead. <laughs> Can you tell me you're a pop band now? Um... But anyways, that, that's cool. I like to hear all of your different influences because I think it's like especially interesting because, you know, when you guys come together, you do make music that's super unique. Um, uh, Johnny, I actually wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, your voice specifically. Mm. Um, I wanted to know just about how you found that kind of power and range over time. Uh, I, you know, to, uh, such a big question, mm. but um, is there anything that uh, you've done uh, lately in technique or anything different uh, that you've been excited to try? So I genuinely am not a huge fan of my voice. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's like, it makes me really self-conscious. Mm. I just wanted to play guitar. Mm. Somehow started singing. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to answer that question. I just do whatever. That's like, cool. I don't have like real training or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I sang in chorus when I was a kid, but that's very different. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe there's anger. That kind of comes out once in a while, like "Natural Born Killer." That is one take. Mm -hmm. I literally wrote the words oh. and just like fucking sang it. And afterwards, Drew was like, Phew. and I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to do it again. I don't mm -hmm. want to double it up." And I'm like, mm -hmm. there it is. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I have like a weird. When I was a kid, I sounded like Macaulay Culkin. You know what I'm talking about? Like in mm -hmm. Home Alone, when he's like, blah, 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 and it's all <laughs> it's, like, it's like fucking like throaty and nasally and just weird. And I just yeah. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Um, but no, I don't, I, I wish I, you know, I know some people like the voice and I don't mm -hmm. have any like tips. I just kind of like smoke butts. <laughs> <laughs> smoke butts. I smoke butts. Uh, chat saying you got that voice from screaming at Apex. Maybe so. Uh, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to recruit your yeah. fans to come. Oh, to you my, totally I'm, like, should. Oh man. I'm, like, come watch they would love it. I'm sure. Um, and uh, talk to me about the, the vocals on, um, on my pink lullaby. 
uh, because there there are some screams in there. There are little yeah. like gutturals in there. Yeah, um, talk to me about those. How did those happen? It's so funny. My my girlfriend is like a big fan of scream music. Oh yeah, and. Uh, I don't think she loves my screams. She was like, they're all right. I'm like, oh. I was like, oh. I was like, cause you're like a connoisseur of screaming. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like a huge right. fan of like under oath and like Spencer likes oh, my screams. Yeah. He's a, he's a fucking fan. Like, I, um, you know what? Uh, when I was in the studio with Joe last time, he kind of taught me like that. If you don't go at a hundred percent, Sometimes you can get some really cool shit out, almost like whispering and kind of. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't know. I just kind of like played around with Drew into the microphone and moved around and did things with my throat shape and cool. just kind of hit it until it sounded like palatable. Mm -hmm. But um, I give so much respect to people that really know how to do this like consistently and well. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, Wah. I'm trying right now. I'm, I'm like up on YouTube trying to learn how to do it better. Hollings is probably out. Hollings, are you going to make fun of my screams now that you know the truth that I don't know what I'm doing? <laughs> but um, I'm going to try to get better. I want to scream more like that. Yeah. I really enjoy it. Yeah. It's so fun live. Definitely. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> I feel like it's the crowd so going to you. But it's yeah. like, <laughs> The it's dudes in the front moment. are like so happy. The girls in the back are like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> who hurt him? <laughs> I'm gonna fix him. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> uh, so you know, in the past, I think specifically on MCID, you guys had uh, so many cool features. Uh, from like we talked about Gojira, uh, Young Thug. Um, in the future or on this album upcoming, uh, are there any uh, features that I can't you can't tell you that? Or, uh, ah, it's a surprise. Ah, damn, my, my journalism. No, there's actually no, there's no, there's no features. This uh -huh. is just us. Great. Yeah. Great. How many tracks is it going to be? 12. 12. 12. 12. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might make a deluxe, though. Ooh, a deluxe. I mean, yeah. shit, we got, yeah. we got leftovers. It we sounds like you got a lot of leftovers. Yeah. Yeah. We just keep writing, too. Like We wrote a mm -hmm. few uh, songs and on tour this time. I know we just said that we don't write on tour, but this past tour... <laughs> <laughs> we were lying. <laughs> this past tour, we did. We like, wrote we're some... We were lying to you fully. <laughs> getting mixed signals. Um, so for the album name, Midnight Demon Club, uh, who thought of the album name? Where did it come from? So Drew thought of the album name based on... The so there's a song mm. called Midnight Demon Club, and there's a whole ecosystem that we're trying to build with this Midnight Demon Club. It's actually kind of deep. Um, but then, uh, you know, we were thinking about calling the album uh, Natural Born Killer, and it kind of got to this point where it was like, ah, oh, the SEO is just going to lead you directly to, like, Quentin Tarantino movie, which is great. <laughs> I love that movie. You know, uh -huh. Obviously, there's a, a reference to that mm -hmm. in, in the song, but um, Midnight Demon Club just kind of, like, embodied what... and it's tough to like say too much before that song is heard. Mm -hmm. uh, that song is pretty cool lyrically, I think. Cool. But um, yeah, Drew is actually the guy that was like, what if we called it Midnight Demon Club? And we're like, it's fucking awesome. So yeah, it's a cool name. It's really awesome too to like be at this point in our lives where it's like, it doesn't have to be our decision or it has to be our decision but like if somebody has an idea and it comes from outside of us and it's good and it works then there's no pride anymore you know yeah. what I think back in the day like, no it has to come from this brain here and no, if somebody right. helps and has an artistic input and it's good mm -hmm. like what the fuck go for it you know what yeah. I mean so it was, yeah shout out to Drew for that name uh, what about the imagery uh, album cover is really cool especially like the music video uh, for Natural Born Killer was really cool really well shot really well done um Who'd have thought of the imagery, like the visuals? That'd be me. Yeah. yeah. What was a, uh, what was going through your head in terms of themes? So we had. Uh, I'll just. I'll, I'll. I'll do this because it's important to the album. Um, mm -hmm. We had a uh, one of our OG friends. You know, we have MCID. Shout out to MCID. My crew is dope, and it's like our all of our friends from way back in the day, from the Cape Cod days and shit. And we had this one friend in particular who was kind of like our rock and mm -hmm. rest in peace to Dave Keyes. He passed away um, mm -hmm. in February of this year. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting out in Los Angeles and Dave was like a real big dude. He loved food and he was just like a really creative human, mm -hmm. like one of the best people you'd ever meet. Um, cool. And I was like half you know, I was smoking the devil's lettuce. I won't say what it is on Twitch, but I was smoking <laughs> the devil's lettuce on the beach and like <laughs> and uh and I was in this kind of state of like half laughing and half crying. You know what I mean? It's just kinda of like losing my shit and I'm just like, 
oh, where, where is Dave right now? What would Dave be doing? And I just like kind of started chipping out and thinking about this like ice cream heaven. You know what I mean? I'm like, Dave's yeah. in a good spot. This dude's fucking in the clouds right now, just eating cotton candy and like, you know, it just, I don't know, it just kind of like started warping into this thing. I started thinking about um, how Dave would, he never got to hear this album. And he was like our biggest supporter, our biggest fan. He loved our music so much. And it's just like, I'm so sad that he didn't get to hear this album. But um, what would he have done? So I kind of started channeling, like, what would Dave do visually? And, and like, I feel like this dude was so. Uh, Creative and, and so I started thinking about the Grim Reaper because I was thinking heavily about death. Mm-hmm. What is the Grim Reaper? So the Grim Reaper is somebody who's going to come in and help you transition from life to the coffin. You know, he's, he kills you. I started thinking about there's a lot of people, and by the way, Dave passed away because he couldn't get out of his own way. Mm-hmm. You know, he had his own demons. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people that can't get out of their own way, but that doesn't mean that they're horrible people. And I'm like, what if there was a Grim Reaper that didn't just kill you? but instead helped you transition to a better mm. place. So the Grim Reaper is like this death dude. The Ice Cream Reaper, who you see on the cover, mm-hmm. you know, the pink dude? With yep. The, he's in the video. He is instead offering you this magical, you know, like a mm-hmm. uh, chance to kind of, and that's what the vis- video is, is showing you because every time one of our uh, future Midnight Demon Club alumni licks the cone mm-hmm. with the pills on it, a portal opens up and mm-hmm. they are then transported. So this is like the Grim Reaper's cousin. And he's smoking the devil's lettuce, and he's like a chiller dude. He's happier. He's dressing in pink, and he's like, "What's up? Like, there's there's a better life. You don't have to end it right now. You mm-hmm. at this point where you might be suicidal, or you might be down on your luck, or you might be." And then I started realizing that it's not just Dave. It's like for whatever reason, our music has you know a lot of our songs have this kind of they're deep, they're heavy. A lot of it is is born from tragedy, and, and I know that a lot of our fans and a lot of our listeners. Um, they can relate to those lyrics and, and they've gone through tough times themselves and we're trying to create this place, this ice cream heaven for all of us, for mm-hmm. MCID to kind of, we want to become the Midnight Demon Club. We want to take people, I see this at shows, I see this in my inbox, I see this in messages, I see people that are like, yo, that song helped me and it saved me. So I feel like we are already the ice cream reaper. I feel like that is our job. Like we do show up and we give people an opportunity to go from their terrible day or their terrible life even, mm-hmm. or their terrible period of their life and make them realize, like, hey, we can we can still have fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I guess that sums it up. And then, yeah, the, the visuals themselves just was born of this kind of being uh, high on the beach and thinking about Dave. Cool. That's great. I mean, I, I think the, the fact that you can bring it to the fans so easily and connect it to a community is pretty awesome. Um, how would you guys say your relationship with fans is? I mean, obviously, like, you're on Twitch, so you're at the forefront. But uh, for you guys, like, talking with fans or if they ever send you messages and whatnot, what, what would you say your relationship is like with the with the fan base, especially at shows? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, like, that, one of the biggest... Uh, one of the biggest problems with, was co- with COVID was, like, restricting our access to fans. Mm-hmm. But, you know fuck that like we're, we're, we you know that's my favorite part so mm-hmm. after the shows we like to go we like to go meet people and oh, cool. talk to people and you know s- just you never know what you're gonna get you never know what like someone's gonna say to you or like who you're gonna meet and mm-hmm. that's the whole that's the best part about it and it's always positive yeah you know I don't think no one comes to our shows and throws eggs at us yet throw cinder blocks <laughs> through the green room window oh yeah that was <laughs> that was funny could they throw ice cream and would that be okay if, uh... I, don't, I don't know I think we'd probably gum up their pedal boards and shit but you know mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah you should do it uh, yeah. yeah I mean we um, uh, Rich and I are also on Twitch uh, mm-hmm. Grenade Bands yeah um, I don't stream as often as I should but we uh, we all play Apex um, obsessed with it uh, Mark and I play all the time mm-hmm. Um, and I play with fans a lot too and cool. it's so cool to like play with someone who is just worlds beyond your skill level and they're just kind of like come on I got you like I'll, I'll hop you out <laughs> but your music is so cool and I'm like are you kidding you're so cool look at all this crazy <laughs> shit you're doing you know that's cool it really like grounds you out you know that's great that's cool, man. I, I, I got some people in the chat right, and uh, I've made great friendships through this band. They're so nice, always showing love and talking to people after the show. Thanks, guys. So that's just a testament to you guys. Um, and uh, also, kind of to... Uh, uh, yeah, Rich. I just uh, commented in the chat, it's actually taken me quite a while to, <laughs> to, 
to do that because I had to like verify my. <laughs> That's how like non pro I am. I wasn't verified. <laughs> But I finally got verified. So, yeah, that's me, Dick Jr. I just said, hey, guys, <laughs> exclamation point. Feel free to respond to me. Dick Jr. is, by the way, going to be a Rich's solo name. Oh, great. So potentially, yeah. Good, if good I solo name. That, I don't know. <laughs> if I ever see a Dick Jr., I'll be like, I know that guy. <laughs> yeah. I know that man. I know that Jr. Uh, everybody say hi to Dick Jr. in the chat, by the way. Um, <laughs> for the uh, for being for getting back on tour, you guys are coming back on tour pretty soon, uh, starting in September. Uh, for I believe it was fifty five dates. I heard before. Um, <laughs> what is this? Fifty five oh, okay. days, oh, okay. not Holy dates. Shit. Oh God. Okay, y'all be dead. <laughs> Um, are you excited to get back on the road? Uh, have you been able to play any of these new tracks live yet? And uh, if you have or haven't, uh, are you excited to play some new songs? I'm so excited to play the new songs. And uh, yeah, we've been practicing all week. Because um, again, like like I said, like we wrote this album in different parts of the country. So um, I hope that doesn't kill the fantasy. But like you know, there's a lot of. Um, We'll have a certain part done, and then we'll play over it with the headphones on. So we're finally starting to play them together live as a band, and they sound fucking great. So I'm so excited to actually get to do this live and in front of people. We've been playing Pink Lullaby cool. live uh, because it's just a, such a slapper. Yeah, uh, It doesn't matter if you know the word. Like, a lot of times when you put out a new song, if people don't know the words yet, it's kind of like a, a weird moment in the show. With Pink Lullaby, it doesn't fucking matter what I'm saying because it's, <laughs> it's just so aggressive that our fans are like ah, and it's like I go out there and, and help with the circle pit and uh, it's fun so oh that's great you got a circle pit at the show oh yeah phenomenal man that sounds great uh, do you guys have a favorite uh, tour meal bus sandwiches supplied by Mark <laughs> that, no, supplied by Matt now <laughs> the way Matt makes a sandwich on the bus <laughs> I you, should yeah, yeah. you should Please explain it. Please tell us your bus sandwich bus recipe. The bus driver's always yelling at me. It's like, you're not supposed to cook yeah, sandwiches you, you in, the in the toaster. <laughs> so I'll just turn the toaster like on its side. Like, and then just put the sandwich in there and just toast it like, you know, a conventional oven type of thing. <laughs> One night we were cooking a steak right on top of it. <laughs> like, sorry, catching on fire and shit. Man makes a whole kitchen out of a toaster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do, what what is in the sandwich? Is it just cheese? Oh, it depends or? on what's on the writer, I guess. But like, wow, yeah, it's no, it's usually a lot of stuff. <laughs> just whatever's around. It's, yeah, it's usually involving wow. the devil's lettuce, so it could be anything <laughs> in that sandwich. Yeah. Oh man, are you excited to play uh, any venues uh, again or for the first time coming up? Red yeah, Rocks. well, yeah. yeah, Red Rocks. Oh yeah, We're, we Rock. kicked the tour off with um, First Ave. Mm -hmm. in Minneapolis and we have two nights there and you know if we sell that out two more nights we get our gold star on the on the wall Ooh. we should take you, you have to sell it off for a while you gotta sell it out five nights wow uh, and we'll be up on the wall next to names like Prince and Nirvana Rage Against the Machine mm -hmm. I mean anybody that was anybody went through there and uh, it'll be like a it's a passage you know cool yeah it'll be tight um how do you pronounce the one in Chicago? Ar Argon, Argyle? Oh, the Aragon. Aragon. The Aragon. Uh, maybe I don't know. It's I know. I remember Mastodon did like a live at the Aragon. It's because it's I, such I think a it cool might be that. venue. Yeah, like yeah. it's got all the it's really cool. Um, it looks like you're in a town. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw. I've seen videos of it. Never been myself, but it seems pretty awesome. It's dope. It sounds amazing in there too. Mm. And uh, oh, somebody in the chat wanted to know. Uh, Favorite tracks from you guys? Uh, I'm gonna since we're talking about tour. What's your favorite song to play live? Each of you. It's Pink Lullaby right now. Cool. That'll change as soon as we put the album out. Mm. Yeah, Blood Feathers probably one of mine. Cool. Yeah, that's a good one. Serotonia. Mm. Wolf. Wolf. Yeah. Wolf is timeless. Mm -hmm. I I I I still just have always loved. Um, um, Lydia. Serotonia and Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, it's his favorite song to play. Look, uh, we we play Linda once in a while, but I forget what city we were in. But like we played Lydia recently, and I screwed it up so bad. <laughs> Where was that? Well, but like, like a trillion times. Yeah, like the song that I've, I've played probably more than any other song, and I like screwed it up like really bad right in the middle. 
I forget where we were, but like that was probably my my, my favorite song of, of the that tour that we did in Europe, just because it was so memorable. You know what I mean? <laughs> that happened. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, uh, just because I love this username in the chat so much, uh, Rocket Frogman uh, is asking my friend Ben. No, is Rocket the biggest Frogman fan. just said that he doesn't like the single, so he gets no favorite. Oh, I'm just kidding. you know what? I'll be the bigger man, even though you don't like our music, Rocket Frogman, or our current music. I, your friend Ben does. <laughs> He's obviously got it going on. So you know what? Hello to Ben and only Ben from that duo. Of friends. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm just kidding. I hope you like the rest of the songs. <laughs> so I went to say hello in the chat, but uh -huh. um, my phone number has been disabled <laughs> for reuse. So I can't. And I can't get in the chat. I can't come oh say hello. Oh my god. <laughs> Talk to Rich about verification. Maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe that's, the, that's the problem. It's the two-factor, two-step. That, that, that stuff really yeah. screws me Why up. I'm so technically challenged. I'm, I'm not even 40 yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, y'all. Well, um, I want to thank you guys for coming out and chat with me for a while. That's and uh, Yeah, I really did. Uh, thanks for being the best. Uh, it's been such a great time. I hope your shows go really well. I hope the album release goes really well. September 9th for everybody in the chat right now. <laughs> It's coming out then. You should come so. to uh, Terminal 5. Hell yeah, I'll be there. I think it's October 8th. October 8th? Oh, New York. I'll be in town. It's such a dream because like I used to, I've seen everybody ever go through Terminal 5. Oh, yeah. It's finally our turn. So, yeah. You've never played there before? No. Re uh, that's surprising. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're gearing up for uh, MCID, but then COVID hit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. You're going to play there. Man, you guys played any uh, New York venues? The last right. one was Brooklyn Steel. Brooklyn Steel, yeah. yeah Brooklyn Steel is a great one. It was lit. It was I like Brooklyn Steel. Crazy. Brooklyn Steel feels like like Brooklyn Terminal Five. It's like similar, but like. A, oh, apparently, I'm sorry. We'll be in Philly October eighth, so I guess it's the seventh. I'm also free that day, cool. so I'll be there too. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Thank so, you guys. A yeah. pleasure to see all of you, and uh, we'll be right back, everybody, with uh, some Thanks, news guys. later today.